Shabbat Shalom, Yeshua. First and foremost, I'm to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Recha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing to those Le'akim that's preached the word in all truth and sincerity. Alone to Israelite foreigner brothers that are like the heathens. But the line of Falsak goes back to the nation of Israel, which nation of Israel are your so called Negroes. Latinos and Native Americans through the prophecies and curses of Deuteronomy 28 chapter and throughout the Bible. So this is Brother Yakal Amaf back to the lesson. And now today's lesson will be entitled Lay Up for Yourselves Treasures in Heaven. I just gonna go on some precepts and uh low willing, you brothers and you sisters out there, be edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai. I'm going to start with the book of Matthew, chapter 6, and verse 19. You know, and this when our Lord Yahweh Shai was speaking uh, to his disciples, you know. Uh, and it reads, uh, Matthew 6 and 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth and rape. You know, let's just define the word treasures real quick. It's uh, from the Greek word, the sorrows, the sorrows. Which means uh, a storehouse, a uh, repository, a magazine, um, the place in which good, good and precious things are collected and laid up, uh, a casket, coffer, or other uh, receptacle in which valuables are kept. You know, so in other words, you know, because your valuables will be your money. You know, your uh, in today's day will be the FRA notes. You know, your gold, your silver. You know, the uh, you know, your trusting in your four hundred one K, your pension plans, you know, we're not supposed to, you know, put our trust in these things. You know, because as our Lord is gonna say, where moth and rust stuff corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Yeah, because a thief can steal all your money, man. You know? So our Lord Yahweh Shah was just commanding his disciples not to put their trust in in, in their money. You know? Now it's nothing wrong with having money because the scriptures do say that money is a defense. You know, money answer of all things, but we're not at the end of the day, we understand that, you know, uh, you know, uh riches profit now in the day of wrath, as the scriptures say. You see? But righteousness delivered from death, as the scriptures say. And we read verse twenty it says, Well lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven and right. Will be the treasures in heaven, you know, our works that we do and the truth to please the Lord. You know, going out on the highways and byways week in, week out, you know, to the best of our ability, you know, making our daily sit downs throughout the week, you know, praying, fasting, being a good brother. You know, those things are treasures that, you know, we're uh, uh, calculating up in heaven. You know, it says, where neither moth nor rust do corrupt, because you know, you can't, uh, your deeds that you do in the Lord, no one can, it can't corrupt, you know. It says, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. A thief can't break through something that's spiritual, you know. So, Yahweh Shah is basically telling his disciples, you know, hey, you know, do the best you can on earth because, you know, that's going to matter at the end of the day, you know, because, when you go to Ecclesiastes 9 to 10, it reads, Whatsoever thy hand find to do, which hand, you know, goes back to the Hebrew word, which means Yod, which means strength and power, you know. So whatsoever thy hand or thy strength find to do, do what thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. Right, so in other words, while we're on earth, you know, do the best we can and, and try to please Yahweh Bashmoshai with all our strength. You know, we have to go all out for the Lord because, you know, um, you know, if we're actually dead, you know, if we give up, you know, go back to the spiritual world, we can't work for the most high no more. So while we're on earth, you know, we're supposed to, you know, do the best we can and please the Lord by teaching this truth, man. You know? So Let's go back to Matthew 6 and 20. It says, but lay up for yourself treasures in the heavens. So that's the that's whole, uh, 
that's the subject matter. You know, all we gotta do is keep continuing to uh, be on profitable service and do what we're commanded to do. You know, you know, because this is our uh, service. You see, so it says verse twenty one says, I mean, uh, where I'm reading again, uh, Matthew six and twenty. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. Yeah, so no one can steal the deeds that you do in the Lord. You know? It says, because when all hell break loose, we want to be able to, as apostles always say, you know, we want to be able to, Lord, want to withdraw from my spiritual bank account by the, by the Lord, you know, granting us mercy, you know, and granting us with a hedge of protection, you know, granting us with, you know, food and water in a time of famine. You know, because all those are benefits for serving the Lord. You know, and we definitely want those perks, those uh, those blessings. You know, in in, in Jacob's trouble, you see, uh, everybody is is is, you know, running around with their heads cut off, man. You see, it says verse twenty one says, "For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also." Yeah, so, you know, where the treasure is, you know, because it's if an actual man, if wherever the treasure, the actual treasure, like you know, that's in the you know, like in the, um, you know, a little box or something, you know, a person that's where his heart is at. That's all he thinks about, you know. So that's this truth is all what we're supposed to think about, man. We're supposed to live, breathe, live and breathe this truth. So this is a, this is our main priority, man. You know. Just as the person that's looking for that treasure, that's the main priority to find that treasure, treasure it and possess it. So same thing with us in the spiritual sense is this truth is our main priority, which is our treasure. Uh, and then, you know, we, we make this truth, uh, we put the Lord first and make this truth our priority, man. You see? Because when you go to First Corinthians, uh, First Timothy chapter 6, in verse 17, it says, uh, Charge, which charge means command, them that are, are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded. Yeah, because having, you know, a lot of money can make you pride, prideful, you know, look, looking down upon the poor, man. You know, and that's why, you know, Solomon said, give me, uh, give me neither poverty nor riches, you know, because if you, if you have, uh, let's just get it real quick. Uh, since I quoted, I'll come back to this. Because being, you know, being rich on this side, man, comes with a lot, you know. Um, you know, as Biggie said, you know, uh, more money, more problems. And that's true, you know. Uh, Proverbs 38, which he was a nigga, you know, but what he said was true. Um, but this is uh, Proverbs 30 and uh, verse 8. And it reads, remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Yeah, so in other words, just, you know, we just want, you know, get our daily bread. You know, living day by day, you know, and not having too little, not having too much. You know, uh, middle class, you know. Uh, it says, verse 9, it says, lest I be full or deny you. Yeah, because when you're rich, you're full. You know, you're at your fullest capacity. You have more than your heart can risk, you know. So by you having all these riches, you could deny the Lord and say, who is the Lord? You know, yeah, you know, you get proud and thinking that you got all these riches upon you uh, uh, by your own strength, you know, and you start to get very prideful. It says, or lest I be poor and still and take the name of my God in vain. Yeah, so, you know, you don't want to be poor on the streets and stealing, which is a sin, you know, and, and taking the Lord in vain, man. You know, or the Lord ain't nothing, man. Why would the Lord put me in this position? You know, uh, uh, the Most High, He not real. You know how them, you know, homeless people be be thinking, man. You know, so you don't want to be in these two different predicaments. You know, you want to be have just enough just to get by, man. Your daily bread, as Yahweh Shai said. You know, but going back to First Timothy chapter six and verse seventeen says. Charge them, which charge once again means command, them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, meaning prideful, nor trust in uncertain riches, 
but it's a living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy, right? So, because, you know, back then you had Israelites in Apostle Paul's day in the Roman Empire, when they were, they were uh, some Israelites, they were well off. You know, they were, you know, they had money, you know, they had, uh, you know, uh, substance, you know, they had lands and, you know, it was some jakes in the Roman Empire that was doing doing pretty good, you know. But Apostle Paul is warning Israelites not to trust in your uh, in your riches, man. You know because they're uncertain. You know, one minute they hear, one minute they can go. As the scriptures say, the riches fly away. So it's not, you know, you don't want to depend on that. You see, and uncertain is uh uncertainty. Let's uh look it up real quick. It says a state of being uncertain, um, something that is uncertain or that causes the one to feel uncertain, on um, unreliability, unre unpredictability, riskiness, you know. So yeah, so that's how riches are, you know, their unreliability. You know, once again, you know, one minute they can be here, they could be gone, you know, because so, someone can steal them, steal your riches, you know. And so you don't want to be in a mindset of trusting, having a mindset to trust in your riches when all hell breaks loose, because that's not going to deliver you from the wrath of the Lord. You see? And let's go. Uh, let's keep going on. It says, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, Yahweh, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. See, Yahweh Bashmosai gives us all things richly to enjoy spiritually. Which the Lord can bless us physically, you know, with money and stuff. But the Lord doesn't want that for the most part because he know, you know, the, what riches can do to a man. You know, it can turn that man, that Israelite man's heart away from the Lord. So the Lord doesn't want that, especially if you're part of the elect, you know. If you're the elect, you're not going to be rich on this side, man. You know. You might have a good job, you know, have a... A good paying job and you know you well off but you're not gonna be your jay-z's or your floyd mayweathers or you know people in that in that status you know your denzel washington's which they all sold out anyways to get those riches but let's keep going on verse 18 says they that do good that they be rich in good works so you want to be rich in good works which is laying up your treasures in heaven it says ready to distribute you know Willing to communicate, yeah, you know, because, you know, we are, we, we the body, so we're supposed to help out each other the best we can, you know, when we have it. We can't, if we had the money and, you know, brother in need of it, if we know it, we, we're not supposed to, um, you know, hire our money under our rock, you know, because cause that's, that's, that's selfish, man, you know, because there might be a point in time when you're in that same brother's stead. You know, and you might need help, and the Lord might not have nobody help you just based on because you didn't help that brother, you know, or brothers, you know. So, you know, uh, don't withhold that hand, which uh, Scripture's talking about, you know, um, so, which it's not only about money, you know, but, it, you know, it goes into, you know, you know, only stop our money is is with your deeds, your you know, your efforts, or your charity, you know, uh, you know, anything that involves in giving. This is a uh, Proverbs three and twenty seven. It says, "Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it's in the power of their hand to do it." Yes. Yeah, so let's look up another translation. It says, "Uh." NLT version says, "Do not withhold good from those who deserve it." Yeah, so don't withhold. If you if you know the brother in need of something, you don't withhold that. You know, because the brother deserve it. Because good to say, help a godly man, not a sinner. You know, it says when is in your power to help him. See, and we read verse uh, twenty eight. It says, "Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by the year." So in other words, don't tell your brother. You know. Oh, I got you tomorrow, man. You know, just, just, just around me tomorrow, knowing that you got it on your side, man. You got to give it to that brother, you know, 
uh, when he needs it right now, you know, if he have it, you know. So it just goes into not being selfish, you know, and because that's the spirit of the world, man, you know. And let's go back to um, first uh, Timothy six and eighteen says says first Timothy six and eighteen they that that they do good that they be rich in good works, you know, helping brothers out financially or with charity. You know, helping brothers, you know, uh, you know, with the cars or, you know, giving them a better place to stay. Any good works. It doesn't, it, it, just, it doesn't just stop with money, you know. It says, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, you know. I had that line of communication with the Akin. It says, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation and gets the time to come that they may load lay hold on eternal life, right? So that's the point I want to get, verse 19. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation, you know, against the time to come, see? So that's why we're laying in store, in store you, know, our, our, you know, our righteous deeds that we do in the Lord so we can, and guess the time to come, which is Jacob's trouble, you know? Because that will be the foundation you know, which you have a size of foundation to rock, but you know, you you will establish your own foundation by having good deeds in the Lord. So when the time to come, which is Jacob's trouble, you'll be able to withdraw from that spiritual bank account. So, you know, with the Lord granting you with the mercy and the hedge of protection, allowing you to eat in the time of famine, you know, putting it in your minds to to uh move certain ways at, at the perfect time, you know. So you know, so this, so, you know, the whole uh, moral or the less it is, just, you know, put put your heart by Shimon's side first. And um, everything, the Lord's going to, you know, add everything else because at the end of the day, this world is going to fail. This, this, this world is going gonna, is gonna to fail. And it is failing. This is Matthew 24 and 35. Having the earth shall pass away, which is talking about Esau's rulership, you know, because the actual earth, about it forever, you know, the earth will never be destroyed, but the kingdoms will be destroyed, you know, of the heathen nations. So, this is what the Lord your house I was talking about having the earth shall pass away, which is Esau's rulership, his age of ruling, but my words shall not pass away, which are the prophecies. So, the prophecies of our Lord your house are not going to pass away, you know. So, you know, because the words of the Lord doesn't go out void. You know, they are gonna um they are gonna kinda pass in their own appointed time. You know, so uh, I meant to read verse twenty four. It says, Verily I say unto you, this, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled, all the prophecies. You know? So this kingdom is not gonna be destroyed until all the prophecies kinda pass, man. And the major prophecy that we coming that we're waiting on, I'm sorry, is uh, you know, the M O T B, the C hip. The Karagna, that's going to be made mandated in America and throughout the whole world. You know, once that be made, once the C hip be made mandated in America throughout the whole, and throughout the whole world, then the end's going to come, man. Jacob's trouble going to come, and then, you know, uh, World War Three. you know, then our Lord Yahweh Shire is on his way to deliver his elect and to destroy America, uh, Babylon, at the same time as he's delivering the elect. So... Um, so yeah, I, uh, I think that was pretty much it. Just want to make a quick lesson on that. And, uh, let me just read this last precept, verse Corinthians seven thirty one, And they that use this world as not abusing it, you know, we use the world, but we don't abuse it for the fashion of this world passeth away. See the fashion of this world, you know, it's going to, the manner of life of this kingdom is going to pass away, man. You know, so. So yeah, I can. That was pretty much it. Low willing, I could edify. And until uh, next time, shalom.